But Johnson had a pleasant surprise in store for the dispirited Southerners. They are a conquered region, but he doesn't want to treat them as a conquered region. These are his people, after all. Nobody knows for sure what Lincoln would have done, but Johnson's plan favored amnesty for most ex-Confederates and quick acceptance of the seceded states into the Union. The freed slaves got little protection. They weren't guaranteed citizenship or the right to vote. Johnson was on the wrong side of history, on the wrong side of morality, on the wrong side of politics. He just was unable to recognize that the Civil War had changed the nation, that the emancipation of the slaves carried with it some obligation to protect the basic rights of these emancipated slaves. When Congress comes back to town in December of 65, Johnson announces that the restoration of the South has been completed. And that is startling news to the members of Congress. Congress immediately started passing Reconstruction Acts of its own, beginning with an extension of the Freedmen's Bureau, a measure begun under Lincoln to aid the transition of blacks from slavery into freedom. Johnson vetoed it. And from that point on, that will be the story of the relationship between Congress and the President. Congress passes, Johnson vetoes. Congress passes, Johnson vetoes. Johnson's 29 presidential vetoes shattered the previous record of 12, which was set by his hero, Andrew Jackson. When you hitch your presidential leadership to the veto wagon, you're not going anywhere. And Johnson, stubborn and defiant that he was, refused to see that. Now it was Congress's turn to make history. Beginning with the Civil Rights Bill of 1866, they realized they had the votes to override Johnson's vetoes. Their record of overturning President Johnson 15 times still stands. Throughout 1866 and 1867, Congress hammered away at Johnson's authority. In March of 1867, they passed the Tenure of Office Act, limiting the president's ability to remove appointees without the Senate's consent. It was a trap, and Johnson couldn't resist the bait. He suspended and later dismissed his Secretary of War, a holdover from Lincoln's cabinet. Take no prisoners was his attitude. And of course, um, that inspired the other side to fight back in the same way, and that's why he was impeached. By violating the Tenure of Office Act, Johnson gave the radicals in Congress an excuse to get rid of him. Articles of impeachment were drafted. Opposition only made him more and more stubborn. He was unwilling to meet his critics halfway. He was unwilling to listen to criticism. So he just destroyed his own presidency. In February of 1868, the House of Representatives made an unprecedented move, voting to impeach the president. Their charges were flimsy at best and clearly politically motivated. Johnson's the target of a vast left-wing conspiracy. He thought the impeachment was an outrage. He said, the people who are violating the Constitution, impeaching me for violating the Constitution, should be the other way around. A trial in the Senate would determine whether Johnson's misdeeds amounted to the high crimes and misdemeanors required by the Constitution to remove him from office. If two-thirds of the senators voted to convict him, the Johnson presidency would be over. Tickets to this trial were like getting tickets to the Super Bowl. No, they were scalped outside the uh, Senate chambers. It was a matter of great entertainment. It was like a big athletic event. It was the social event in Washington. And uh, the women and all that finery and the diplomats, everybody came to the Senate to see what was going to go on. It was a circus, just as it was in 1999. In the end, Johnson avoided conviction and removal from office by a single vote. Chastened by his run-in with Congress, Johnson passed the rest of his term quietly. After returning home to Tennessee, he would later become the only former president to be elected to the Senate. At the end of the day, you have to admit that he was no Abraham Lincoln. But who was? And Johnson lived with that shadow over him his entire tenure as president. I think Johnson, in a way, discredited the presidency. His intransigence helped empower Congress to take a greater and The troublesome greater relationship between Andrew Johnson and the Congress had a lasting impact on the executive office. 
For the next 30 years, a series of relatively weak presidents would occupy the attend a single day of school. He taught himself how to read. 